Andrew, thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Um, as Andrew said, my name is Chris Stevens. I'm the uh, Managing Director of uh, Central Western Wales for Bwig, a patch that spans from Cambridge to Haverford West, from Cheltenham down to Exeter. Um, and I have done 30 years in the industry, I'm actually only 42. I want to talk to you today broadly about the opportunity that exists and following on from David is interesting actually. I should probably explain before I start that although the name follows on, my involvement in Hinkley Point thus far uh, is, is again a preferred bidder role on, on the ancillary buildings. Um, I think small in, in David's terms, in, in honesty and cash terms, but from a main contractor perspective rather than I piece of work nonetheless. So there's a lot of work to be done, but uh, if you take what I'm about to say from the perspective of a fairly mainstream contractor working in the southwest uh, rather than a civils contractor that's about to uh, start hopefully um, on a major major civil engineering project so it's not just based about Hinkley Point. We are in the southwest undoubtedly about to go through a period of immense change. The next five years is going to see more work than we can probably remember in our lifetimes. Landscaping, landscape changing projects like Hinkley Point, like the arena, like the rail electrification will undoubtedly bring huge opportunity to the region. There are also hundreds of smaller but nonetheless vital projects. And in that phrase, I, I really include the whole of the southwest and the whole of the south of Wales as well. Very much in terms of 2016, acting as part of our supply chain and our area, I think it's all part and parcel of the same thing. I think Hinkley Point have realized that. Uh, and uh, spreading their net to make sure they have sufficient people in their, uh, in their supply chain to run a project such as Hinkley Point. And I think we all ought to be thinking along those terms. Uh, it's uh, obtaining a something around that David's just said, but with, with um, such opportunity comes enormous challenge. Challenge to the local communities, challenge for a construction delivery, and challenge for the national infrastructure in its own right. Our labor levels are too low generally. And again, something's been mentioned already, our skills pool is too small. Our challenge is to think strategically. Our challenge is to understand where to invest. Our challenge is to understand how to invest to actually inject some long-term legacy into our communities as a whole. What skills to invest in? Can we actually source everything we require for our construction sites from a local perspective? Can we actually source the skills locally as well? Do we upskill people in the local community? Do we upskill them to deliver nuclear power plants? Do we upskill them to deliver 10 to 30 million pound more mainstream construction projects? And at the end of the day, what happens when we leave? Are the communities we're building really being left behind in a better state? Generally, this industry is driven by bottom line. Strategic leadership is a code, generally for lower cost, possibly at the expense of real value. By working to reduce our own risks and increase our own profits, we arguably, arguably introduce new risks into a system that over time may well actually act to reduce our profits. What do I mean by system? It's us, it's clients, it's contractors, it's consultants, it's stakeholders, it's the supply chain as a whole. It's people that traditionally don't spend a lot of time really talking to each other they don't really share drivers from the start of a project right to the far end of it. Risk is very regularly passed to the person that can least afford to take it. And while we like partners, partnership begins at a reduced rate and very often ends when something goes wrong. If we spend our entire lives focusing on cost at the expense of value, on passing risk to those that can least afford to take it, on, instead of collaborating properly from top to bottom, we do no favours for an industry as a whole, for the community in general, and for any of us else, anybody else in this room as well. Our culture is shaped by the places we inhabit, by our universities, the parks in which our children play, the buildings in which we celebrate all of our success, they all speak to the society that we try to be. We are privileged. 
come to a grinding halt on the slides. Thank you, Beta. We are the privileged few with that opportunity, the opportunity to really create inspiring buildings that are functional and that are beautiful, that make our society flourish. Buildings that make us world leaders in design, in efficient building, and long-term sustainability. It's not possible unless we have true vision rooted in reality. How do we solve the skills gap without disempowering local communities, putting tradesmen and women out of work, and having the potential to leave large grand scale infrastructure empty and re resembling the mills of the north in five years' time? Excuse me. Constructing excellence begins with realigning our focus from our own bottom line and instead focusing on the outcomes of what we're trying to build and leave behind. Long-term legacy for our communities, quality buildings for the future, positive outcomes for an industry as a whole. This is not some new paradigm that, uh, that, that moves away from the importance of bottom line. Cost remains massively important. Receding internationalism at the expense of being competitive generally is not the answer. To lead in sustainability, efficiency, quality and innovation, we must be leaders in coordination, process and cost reduction. An industry reinforced in outcomes, sorry, refocused in outcomes on constructing fantastic buildings and facilities around the country, moving towards a consolidated, integrated construction industry, working together to drive quality, efficiency, real outcomes, and an industry that is fit for tomorrow. How will we do this? Firstly, leverage technologies of the future, data visualization and information sharing. It opens up a world of stakeholders that perhaps we never knew were there. Distance from site is now largely irrelevant. Passing information by hand is becoming obsolete. Tomorrow's engineers and tradesmen will have grown up with smartphones and tablets. To them, BIM will be intuitive. And it's these technologies that we as an industry must learn to be at the cutting edge of. And although we try, I don't think we're anywhere close to being there yet. Strategic mobilization of resources. Again, BIM opens up the world of opportunities to us a vast supply chain at the push of a button. But this needs to be rooted in the idea that we need to be reviewing the outcomes at the end of the project. It's not the answer to everything. Global to local, but with the outcomes in mind. Intelligent investment. Investment into real, local infrastructure needs thought. Knowing what resources to mobilize at what time needs fantastic planning. Will the investment that we're making lead to real legacy for the communities in which we leave? And lastly, something I'm very passionate about, actually building with pride. The industry of the future must be efficient without being overly, overly industrialized. Real construction skills are vital for this industry and for the communities in which we serve. Where does off-site manufacture sit into all of this? Some see off-site manufacture as a, as a danger to the industry. Others embrace it as the answer to all our prayers. To me, it's neither the, it neither heralds the apocalypse to the construction industry nor provides the, the elixir of eternal life. The ability to construct high-quality projects and deliver them on site opens a world of possibilities to us. And that is usable with the supply chain I mentioned earlier. It can, of course, drive down cost, it can improve quality, and it can deliver much more quickly. It could relieve the pressure on, on a heating market, and it could be one of those things that help, but it has to work for us, and I will talk more about this in a second. It isn't a solution in its own right. Link this to the idea of a consolidated, integrated construction industry. A little bit more about all of those topics. BIM enables us to more effectively use off-site methods. 
improved accuracy of drawings and specifications, improved accuracy of information, and improved sharing. No more clashes when things arrive on site. We can source joinery from the highest quality, best value place in the world and bring it to site knowing it'll fit into the hole in the wall that we've created for it. <coughs> Strategic mobilization. How do we mobilize the local, national, and international resources? There are two extremes to this. Firstly, to invest everything locally. Damn the cost. The community comes first every time. Well, secondly, to source everything where it's cheapest. Damn the consequences to the community. Our future lies in neither camp. We should, of course, look to source locally in the Southwest. If we can do it in the Southwest where possible, fantastic. If we can go to the wider community, South Wales and the surrounding areas, fantastic. But not at the expense of the cost, value, and outcomes equation. Can we define that cost, value, outcomes equation? I don't think so. I think that's a function of ind industrial maturity. Maturity to make the right decisions. And those decisions are driven by cost, they're driven by value, they're driven by outcomes, they're driven by politics, they're driven by the community, and they're driven by knowledge. Intelligent investment. It's a difficult one, this, to understand where, because the drives locally, pretty well, are local drivers. It is very difficult to try to bring real information to this. Um, but local politicians, local interest groups, and local companies all have their interests and their local, uh, local in investment initiatives. We run the risk of creating shallow investments lasting no longer than the projects themselves. It needs to be avoided. There are many things to think about, not least which skills to up, the, which areas to upskill in the community and when to procure internationally. To prepare local companies for this market, we need to be training managers. We need to be inputting technology to really build businesses that into the future become competitive in their own right, nationally, internationally, and locally. Or they, won't see, they will cease to exist. Fail to do that, and we will have input shallow investment. There are choices to be made. Make the right choices, and we have efficiency. Make the wrong choices, and we have waste. If we take modular construction, modular construction used in the right place is efficient. It's speedy. It improves our time. It has a very good place in this industry. Used in the wrong place, it can be wasteful. Actually, modular construction introduces double floor cassettes and ceiling cassettes and double walls. There's a lot of material waste there. The advantages lie in another area. We need to understand how to use this kind of technology to our best advantage. A meaningful supply of the parts we need, rather than simply a slavish, uh, slavish wor worshipping in the door of off-site manufacture. Look at the car industry. An engine built away from the production line and in my terminology, built off site, is just an engine. It has no double walls, no ceilings, no floors, no double, uh, no double anything. It just comes in a box and it fits in the front. It delivers high quality, efficiency, and it's delivered on time. That is what we need in our industry. The next five years will undoubtedly see some incredible time in this industry. We are privileged to be part of that, transforming landscapes and transforming communities in general. Let us therefore define success differently. Success is a new understanding of partnership, shared risk and shared reward, shared drivers in lieu, in lieu of straight competition. Success is buildings that last, that blaze a trail for sustainability, that reduce our carbon footprint. Success is generations of tradesmen and tradeswomen employed on the back of five years of properly thought through investment in our industry. Success is proper choices, delivery, outcomes, efficiency, state sustainability. They're all things we need to be considering much more than perhaps we do today. 
Success is a client that believes they actually got what they paid for, they got it on time, and they got it safely. True success places those outcomes at the very heart of our industry. Thank you very much.